is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon. We're coming on the air because President Biden is about to address the nation about the growing crisis involving Russia and Ukraine. Some troubling signs inside Ukraine today. At this hour, the U.S. State Department says it is deeply concerned that Russia has launched a possible false flag operation involving Russian separatists who live in the eastern part of Ukraine. They speak Russian. They're Russian sympathizers. Uh, this playing out in the eastern Ukraine village of Donetsk in the Donbass region. Uh, Russia and those separatists accused of staging a car explosion and then evacuations. And then those images playing out on Russian television, along with the claims that it's actually Ukraine planning to move in on those Russian separatists. The U.S. State Department adamant, of course, that Ukraine is planning no such military action. U.S. and NATO allies very concerned that Vladimir Putin is using those images of a staged explosion, these evacuations involving seniors and children, to gain support inside Russia for any possible action on Putin's part, and that Putin could use this as a manufactured reason to invade Ukraine, falsely claiming he wants to protect those civilians, those Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine playing a vital role in this operation, apparently, the U.S. now believes more than 190,000 Russian troops and separatist fighters are now surrounding Ukraine. It was just yesterday we reported here that President Biden had warned that Russia could invade within days. In fact, the U.S. now saying contrary to what Russia has claimed, there has been no sign of any troop pullback, instead an increase of Russian troops. The president speaking just a short time ago with European leaders, with NATO allies, Russia claiming it is still open to a diplomatic resolution of some sort. We also learned late today that the UK has now suspended embassy operations in Kyiv. As you know, we've reported here the U.S. already took that step several days ago. You're looking live at the Roosevelt Room where the president is expected to address the nation momentarily. Again, he has warned for days. We're expected to learn a little more about this conversation he had with allies, with members of NATO. They have been united in this. Uh, whether or not Vladimir Putin is bluffing or planning uh, an invasion of Ukraine remains to be seen. But one thing he has done is unite NATO in ways that we have not seen uh, in recent years. Mary Bruce live outside the White House. And Mary, what are you learning from your sources uh, at the White House, what we're expecting to hear from the president? Well, David, we know that this call lasted roughly 45 minutes. The president and these key allies really having a chance to make sure that they all continue to be on the same page. It's also an opportunity for them to compare notes, essentially, on what they are seeing. We are told that they pledge to continue to pursue diplomacy here, and it also for them to discuss the importance of the steps they are going to take if Putin does, in fact, take action. Now, of course, we've seen this dual track that, that, that the U.S. and key allies have been taking, both diplomacy and deterrence. And while the president here at the White House has been optimistic that there is still a window for diplomacy here, of course, uh, when we hear from the Russians, uh, quite the opposite. It seems they have shown no interest in compromise or deterrence. And that is why you have seen an increasing uh, heightened warnings from, from this administration. The president himself saying there's a very high risk that Putin could, in fact, invade in the next several days. Of course, that is what the White House hopes they are able to prevent, while, of course, alerting everyone to this real, uh, very realistic possibility. And Mary, we have all witnessed a somewhat shift in a strategy here in dealing with Russia compared to conflicts in, in recent years when it comes to Vladimir Putin. This time, uh, the Biden administration uh, looking to put out as much intelligence as it's comfortable doing, a lot more intelligence than we've seen in recent years in an effort to try to tell the world what Putin could be planning. And, and Mary, it'll be interesting to hear how much the president goes into these images that we saw play out today. Uh, he had been warning of a false flag operation, and then we see that uh, now Russia is accused of uh, this explosion and then evacuations that the U.S. State Department believes is totally staged. And this is the kind of actions, the kind of large-scale operation, uh, uh, the appearance of an emergency to justify an invasion that this administration has been warning about. And we really have been seeing a pretty remarkable shift in strategy. This administration really peeling back the curtain on U.S. intelligence, calling out Putin at every step. And here is the president. Mary Bruce outside the White House. Again, the president in the Roosevelt Room, having just spoken with NATO leaders. Good afternoon. Today, I made two vital calls, as I've been making for some months now. Two vital calls. 
that uh, on the situation in Russia and Ukraine. The first was to a bipartisan group of members of Congress who are currently representing the United States, along with Vice President Harris at the Munich uh, Security Conference. The second was the latest in a series of calls over the past many months with the heads of state of our NATO allies and our, the European Union to bring them up to date on what the United States thinks is the current state of affairs and what's likely to happen in Ukraine in the coming days to ensure that we continue to remain in lockstep, that is, the European Union and NATO. Despite Russia's efforts to divide us at home and abroad, I can affirm that has not happened. The overwhelming message of both, on both calls was one of unity, determination, and resolve. I shared with all of those on the calls what we know about a rapidly escalating crisis in Ukraine. Over the last few days, we've seen reports of a major uptick in violations of the ceasefire by Russian-backed fighters attempting to provoke Ukraine in the Donbas. For example, a shelling of a Ukrainian kindergarten yesterday, which Russia has falsely asserted was carried out by Ukraine. We also uh, continue to see more and more disinformation being pushed out by, to the Russian public, including Russian-backed separatists, claiming that Ukraine is planning to launch a massive offensive attack in the Donbas. Well, look, there is simply no evidence of these assertions, and it defies, defies basic logic to believe the Ukrainians would choose this moment with well over 150,000 troops arrayed on its borders to escalate a year-long conflict. Russia's state media also continues to make phony allegations of a genocide taking place in the Donbas and push fabricated claims warning about Ukraine's attack on Russia without any evidence. That's just what I'm sure Ukraine's thinking of doing, attacking Russia. All of these are consistent with the playbook the Russians have used before to set up a false justification to act against Ukraine. This is also in line with the pretext scenarios that the United States and our allies and partners have been warning about for weeks. Throughout these tense moments, the Ukrainian forces have shown great judgment and, I might add, restraint. They refuse to allow the Russians to bait them into war. But the fact remains, Russian troops currently have Ukraine surrounded from Belarus along the Russian border and with Ukraine to the Black Sea in the south and all of its border. You know, look, we have reason to believe the Russian forces are planning to uh, and intend to attack Ukraine in the coming week, in the coming days. We believe that they will target Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, a city of 2.8 million innocent people. We're calling out Russia's plans loudly and repeatedly, not because we want a conflict, but because we're doing everything in our power to remove any reason that Russia may give to justify invading Ukraine and prevent them from moving. Make no mistake, if Russia pursues its plans, it will be responsible for a ca catastrophic and needless war of choice. The United States and our allies are prepared to defend every inch of NATO territory from any threat to our collective security as well. We also will not send troops in to fight in Ukraine, but we will continue to support the Ukrainian people. This past year, the United States provided a record amount of security assistance to Ukraine to bolster its defensive, $650 million from Javelin missiles to ammunition. We also previously provided $500 million in Ukraine and humanitarian aid and economic support for Ukraine. And earlier this week, we also announced an additional sovereign loan guarantee of up to $1 billion to strengthen Ukraine's economic resilience. But the bottom line is this. The United States and our allies and partners will support the Ukrainian people. We will hold Russia accountable for its actions. The West is united and resolved. We're ready to impose severe sanctions on Russia if it further invades Ukraine. But I say again, Russia can still choose diplomacy. It is not too late to de-escalate and return to the negotiating table. Last night, Russia agreed that Secretary of State Blinken and Foreign Minister Lavrov should meet on, Fe uh, on February 24th, February 24th in Europe. But if Russia takes military action 
before that date, will be clear that they have slammed the door shut on diplomacy. They will have, they will have chosen war, and they will pay a steep price for doing so, not only from the sanctions that we and our allies will impose on Russia, but the more outrage the rest of the world will visit upon them. You know, there are many issues that divide our nation and our world, but standing up to Russian aggression is not one of them. The American people are united. Europe is united. The transatlantic community is united. Our political parties in this country are united. The entire free world is united. Russia has a choice between war and all the suffering it will bring or diplomacy that will make a future safer for everyone. Now, I'm happy to take a few questions. Uh, Nancy from Bloomberg. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Do you think that it is wise for President Zelensky to leave Ukraine if an invasion is as imminent as the U.S. says it is? That's a judgment for him to make and a determination as to whether or not I've spoken with Zelensky a dozen times, maybe more. I don't know. And uh, and uh, it's uh, in, in the pursuit of a, di a diplomatic solution. Uh, it may not be fall. It may, may be the wise choice. But it's his decision. And do you have any indication about whether President Putin has made a decision on whether to invade? Do you feel confident that he that he that hasn't made that decision already? As of this moment, I'm convinced he's made the decision. We have reason to believe that. There seems to be a unanimity of spirit to do between the United States and Europe to do some sanctions, a comprehensive sanctions. But are, is everyone on board with the exact same sanctions that you want to do? Uh, yes. Um, There'll be some slight differences, but none. There'll be more add-ons than subtractions. And, and President Putin is going to oversee some nuclear drills this weekend. How do you see that happening? What, what's your reaction to that, sir? Thank you. Well, um, I don't think he is remotely contemplating nuclear, using nuclear weapons. But I do think it's, uh, I think he is, um, focused on trying to convince the world that he has uh, the ability to change the dynamics uh, in Europe in a way that he cannot. Um, but I, I don't, uh, how much of it is a, uh, a cover for just saying we're just doing exercises and, and there's more than that, I, I just can't, it's hard to read his mind. Mr. Mr. Okay, Mr. President, to be clear, to, Mr. President, to be clear, you, to be clear, you are convinced that you are convinced that President Putin is going to invade Ukraine. Is that what you just said a few moments yes, ago? Yes, I did. Yes. So, is diplomacy off the table then? No. There's all until he does, diplomacy is always a possibility. What reason do you have to believe he's considering that option at all? We have a significant intelligence capability. Thank you very Thank much. You guys. Thank you. All right, President Biden in the Roosevelt Room at the White House. And what he just said to reporters there uh, stands out and makes news at this hour. He said he is convinced that Vladimir Putin at this point has made the decision to invade Ukraine, though he said diplomacy is not off the table. But again, when pressed, the president said, yes, I am convinced Putin plans to invade. He also, when asked, should Ukrainian President Zelensky leave the country, given the fact that U.S. intelligence indicates that this invasion will, in fact, happen. Uh, he said he's talked to Zelensky a dozen times, perhaps even more. He said he couldn't remember the actual number. It's been so often. But he said maybe it's a wise choice uh, that he leave the country, but that he would leave that decision up to him. I want to bring in Mary Bruce back at the White House. And we heard the president talking about this playbook again, the false flag playbook, uh, manufacturing scenarios. He went down uh, sort of a list of them, uh, didn't actually list the, the explosion, those images that we looked at just moments ago, but put it into a broader category of sort of this manufactured narrative that we're now seeing playing out on Russian TV, that it's actually Ukraine that wants to invade Eastern Ukraine where there are Russian separatists, Russian sympathizers, if you will, and he said that's simply preposterous in so many words. 
Yeah, the president trying very clearly to cut through the misinformation that is being perpetuated, it seems, by the Russians. The president saying it would defy logic to think that Ukraine would be trying to escalate this crisis right now, especially as more than 150,000 Russian troops are along its borders. This is, again, part of this really astounding playbook that this administration has been following to really uh, detail much of U.S. intelligence to try and essentially beat Putin at his own game here. They are trying to detail not only what to expect, as Russia tries to build a case, it seems, to invade, but also then calling it out in real time as we are seeing these false flag operations play out. And David, really uh, a remarkable increase and change in tone from the president to hear him say that he is now convinced that Russia is going to invade. He's hopeful there is a room for diplomacy, but also making it clear once they take military action, that slams the door shut on diplomacy. David. And in fact, that comment and that answer to the follow-up question made immediate headlines around the world, I'm sure. I do want to bring in Terry Moran on the ground in Ukraine because, Terry, I know it's going to be somewhat uh, unsettling for our viewers here in the U.S. listening to the description of what they believe uh, is possible from Vladimir Putin. You heard the president then talk about not only an invasion of Ukraine, but going right to the capital of Kiev. Uh, he said we're calling out Putin not because we want a war, but because we're trying to prevent one and that if Putin moves ahead, this would be catastrophic and, in fact, a needless war at his creation. It would be catastrophic, of course, most for the people here in Ukraine. And it seems for a long time since the Russian buildup began at the end of last year, there was wishful thinking, even denial about it. But in recent days, as the drumbeats of war have increased and as these these provocations and this this firing across the front lines has escalated along with the information war, the hysteria that the Russian media is whipping up both in those separatist areas and in Russia itself. Uh, there is a greater feeling, an ominous feeling that, that war is very close. And the Russian speaker of the Russian parliament today essentially saying uh, that the president, President Zelensky of Ukraine, is about to start a great big war and that putting the blame once again on Ukraine which doesn't make any sense Ukraine has its military defenses it also has its information defenses uh, one of the top defense officials making a direct appeal appeal to the people on the other side of that front line saying you're you're Ukrainians we're Ukrainians we have no intention of shelling you we have no intention of attacking you trying to pierce uh, that information bubble that they live in controlled from Moscow. But here on, on this side, the description that the president has given has really sunk in. You have seen much greater civil defense preparedness right now from bomb shelters to kids at school training and first aid uh, to people at gun clubs and elsewhere trying to brush up on their shooting and the territorial uh, defense coming into place. It is a country that increasingly is on edge. All of its wishful thinking now, it looks like evaporating, and they are facing a terrible, terrible threat. Yes, the very unfortunate reality now uh, setting in in Ukraine where the president of that country has pledged to unity in recent days, saying we will remain strong. But the reality on the ground there is that this is very possible. And in fact, President Biden telling the world just a short time ago that he's convinced Putin has decided to invade Ukraine. One more question on this before we get you right back to local news here in the east. And that comes from our global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz, who's traveling. She's in the region in Poland. She interviewed the Defense Secretary Austin today, who is visiting with U.S. troops. We know there is a huge presence of U.S. troops throughout the region. Uh, the Biden administration, administration making it very clear that U.S. forces will not be going into Ukraine, but they, they are there in the surrounding region as a show of force. Uh, and Martha, I know you did ask the defense secretary a question that I'm sure many people at home are asking. Is there any chance here that Vladimir Putin is bluffing? He said, absolutely not. This is no bluff. You cannot put that many troops around Ukraine and what those troops are doing. And they have medical supplies and nurses. And Lloyd Austin was a lifelong soldier before he was defense secretary. He said, as a soldier, you would never do those things unless you were going to take action. And we were sitting in a hangar. There were tanks in there. There were armored vehicles in there. And I said, can you imagine tanks like these rolling into Kiev if this happens? And he said, yes, I can. A very frightening picture. 
Sobering answer from Secretary Austin, Martha Raddatz, who's right there along the western border in Poland. She will be in Ukraine uh, anchoring our coverage of ABC's This Week on Sunday morning. You'll have much more of her interview with Secretary uh, Austin then. Even before then, she'll be with me tonight on World News Tonight. Our coverage continues on ABC News Live, abcnews.com, and as I just mentioned, we'll be back with the entire team for World News Tonight. For many of you, it's time for your local news. I'm David Muir. I'll see you shortly. Good day. This has been a special report from ABC News.